What's up everyone, Garrett here, and welcome back to the continuation of the building a portfolio website using React series. Um, the other videos have been doing pretty well, and it looks like everyone's enjoying these videos. Um, so really, really happy to see that everyone's enjoying the videos. It's actually my favorite part when I get to see like the feedback that I get on the videos themselves. I think that's really cool and pretty re rewarding for me. So um, thanks everyone for, for watching the videos and I hope that you all uh, continue to enjoy them and um, that they you know continue to bring value to you guys. So um, in this video, we're gonna be setting up uh, the routing. Um, so basically when we go to these links, it will go to different pages and then just like it does here, we're not gonna actually build the pages in this video, that'll be um, in the following videos, but we just need to set up the routing so that we can actually kind of have something that looks more like a website. And then in the next video, we'll tackle the individual pages themselves. Okay, so let's go back to uh, what we have so far, and basically, we just have uh, the, the header as well as the footer, and the footer is kind of has like a margin on it, which is why it's, um, you know, pushed down a little bit. So what we're going to do now is we can actually close this components folder for here right now. And we will create another folder called pages. Now within react, you can organize your project however you want, you don't really have to have like a pages folder, a components folder, so on and so forth. Um, there's a number of different approaches and how to organize your project. But for a small project, and for me personally, and what I've experienced thus far in using react, um, this kind of approach works pretty well. So we're going to have all of our pages, which are basically going to be components, but they're going to be like parent components, if you will, um, just like container components, I guess you could think of it that way. Um, so we're going to have pages, and then we will have the content of those components, be it you know, just text that we kind of pass in or other components, those will be inside of the components folder and we'll use them throughout the pages or the application in general as we need. So what we're going to do now is we will create a new file and call this homepage.js. And inside here, we'll do what we normally do, which is import react from react. <clears throat> and then uh, this page can be a functional component. It does not have to manage state in any way. Um, I like to call these components specifically that are going to be used for pages. I like to call them whatever the name of the component would be and then page just so I always know that it's a page and what page it is basically. So home page, about page, contact page, um, you know, work page, portfolio page, um, user profile page, you know, I don't know, whatever it is that you're going to be doing. That's kind of how I like to do it. So we'll have props. And then we'll export default home page like that. And then we will return inside of here right now, we're not actually going to build the entire page. But what we will do is we'll just return the home page works and actually with an exclamation mark. And if you've ever used Angular, this is actually when you create uh, a new component through the CLI, you get it, it auto create it auto populates the components content to say um, this home page or whatever the page, whatever the component is called works. So um, it's just something that I kind of started doing based on what Angular does. It's just a personal thing that I kind of like just so that when I put it in, I can immediately see a response instead of just leaving it empty, which you can't actually do anyway, because it would give you an error. But um, the next thing that we're going to do here is we're going to you whoops, not typing in the right place. We're going to use a route. Uh, and this is a, a react router thing. So this is basically how you kind of say what you want to show up when this path matches. So I'll type it out and then I'll kind of try and explain it. So we'll have the slash here. That means just our website and we'll say exact. Um, and then we'll have not tender, we'll have render. Um, So 
So we need to import our page here. Uh, this will be home page. Okay, now we should be able to import it down here. Um, and this will be state this dot state dot home dot title. Um, and that's why that's not working. And also here needs to say home page. So you might actually notice that this this did actually work. But it says it all whoops it says it all the way up here, not where we want it to obviously. Uh, but it does work. And actually, the reason that it says it all the way up there is because I didn't do this correctly. Um, and instead of putting it where it belongs, I put it inside of the nav bar. So I actually move that down a couple lines to outside of this tag right here. And then it'll start to work and it'll say what it's supposed to say right there. Um, and we will say subtitle will equal this dot state dot home dot subtitle. And then one last thing will be text. And this will say this dot state dot home dot text. Now this isn't actually going to show up here, we're going to make that happen in the next video. Uh, but we do want to get these routes kind of in place for right now. So we can actually copy this three more times or two more times rather. And what we're going to do, and then I'll explain kind of what's going on here. Uh, till there. Um, so now we actually don't have the other pages. So what we need to do now is go back, make our about page dot JS. And we will make actually, I'm also going to just to save time copy what we have in the home page and just change this to be about page here. And then we would make one more page called the contact page dot JS. Whoops. And I will do the same thing here, changing this to be contact page. Um, and then we can actually get rid of those pages for now. Now down here, in the render section, we can just add this and say, about page. Uh, and we need to add title there. Change that to be about because this is our state up here. And then basically do this one more time. And instead, this will be contact page. Now we need to import those two things. So we'll do that up here. We'll say about page. We'll say contact page. Okay, great. Um, so this now works. It, it technically is working the way that we're telling it to. So let me kind of go over uh, what this is doing right here, because it might look like a little kind of gibberish. So what we're doing is we're basically using react router to say that when we're on a certain path, render or display a certain component. And so we're saying these these links react router uses the link component instead of the anchor tag or an a tag um, or a button or something like that and so um, we have this link right and then we say two and this is the path that we want it to go to that's why when we click on one of these up here you'll notice that in this url bar right here when we click on the different options the url changes okay now inside of this route down here, we're saying whenever you are at this path, um, render this component. 
It's as simple as that. And there are a number of different ways to do this within React Router. I chose this way because I'm passing in properties as opposed to just saying, no, just throw up this specific component, which you can also do. Um, but this is really good to be able to send uh, props into a component that you're trying to render. And we can also get rid of this exact. The reason that we need the exact there is because technically, if we have about here and contact there, technically, if I didn't have this, this here, technically this is the same as all of these because they all have a slash. And so by putting the exact property there, the exact, I guess, attribute you call it or uh, property, we're basically saying, no, only look for the exact match of whatever this is. And so that basically enables us to, this should work, have, um, it's because I didn't change that. There we go. This basically now enables us to, whenever you click on a different button up here in the navigation bar, you'll see that um, the URL changes as well as the content because we're actually rendering a different component. So we go to about and you'll notice about and about page. So with that, the routing for our website is actually now done. Uh, the only other thing we have to do is change this to be contact. But um, with that, we're now done and we can start on the individual pages. Now, the reason that this stuff is important is because we're going to be using this state from the main application page that we created in the last videos. We're going to be using that to pass that data in as props into our pages so that we basically don't have to have the pages be class based components, they can be functional components, and in which case they just simply display data, right, all while we maintain the bulk of the state for our application in our main controller, or in our, not controller, that's an angular thing, in our main component. And that's kind of what you want. You don't want to have stateful components everywhere, because then you can kind of run into issues with predictability, um, and just not really knowing what's going on when it's going on, if that makes sense. Um, so this allows us to just maintain things from from one consolidated area, although we will have one other stateful component, uh, two other stateful components. Um, so yeah, so that's going to be it for uh, for this video. Uh, in the next video, we're going to start uh, with getting the home page in order so that it doesn't just say home page works, it will actually start to display something. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this is really starting to take shape. Uh, I think this is going pretty well. Uh, let me know in the comments how you guys are liking these videos. Um, and also, what, I mean, this isn't going to be a very long series. So what kind of videos do you want to see next? Like I, I'm doing a lot of React, no JavaScript stuff. So um, as long as it kind of falls into that, I'll pretty much check out whatever you guys are interested in learning about um, because I want to learn too. So uh, just let me know down in the comments and, um, you know, hopefully sometime soon I'll be able to make a video on it. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Peace.